Hey there, and thank you for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, aka The Brick Archivist, and today we have a very highly requested and anticipated review, a continuation in our Bionicle fan and review series. This is the Artaka contest winner, the official canon depiction of Artaka, made by, of course, Wombat Combat Pictures. So I've been super, super excited to do this review. We've been reviewing every single Canon Bionicle model, which has been made throughout the years from the Dark Hunters to the Rahi, and now of course to the latest TTV canonization contest. This is the latest lineup in that competition entry, and this is a very big one that a lot of people have been asking me about. And if you have been following the channel, you may know that the reason why this is a little bit delayed is because I was waiting on the pieces to the hammer, specifically these dark gray Technic pieces from an international Brickling seller, which took about two months to get here. I finally got it, they finally arrived, so I'm finally able to do the review. And thankfully this can coincide with the release of the official Artaka artwork and the release of Galva's official Mask of Creation. So for those of you who don't know, there are two parts to every canonization contest on TTV. There is the mock portion where someone creates the mock and the build of what the official winner would look like and once that winner is decided then there is an art portion based off of this mock which can feature or maybe doesn't feature but it could feature a different style of massive creation in which the people would vote to be canonized from there as the official image. And so people voted for a slightly different mask. They picked a certain drawing with this golden mass of creation. You can see the original mask here was created by King K. Since the original mock was built with this mask in mind, I will be reviewing it with this mask on, but I will have a special feature at the end to kind of talk about the differences between the two masks and show some angles of it with the golden mask on itself. So all of my reviews are kind of broken down into four parts. That is posability and articulation. So how well can I get it into poses and how well can it articulate? Building techniques, so are parts used cleverly? Does parts used just make sense? And overall, is it built well and doesn't say fall over or is too weak? And we have aesthetics, so just kind of the overall aesthetics of the model, how good does it look on a shelf or on display? And finally, we have how well does it fit in universe? And what I mean by this is that does it compare, does it look and make sense that it would be a Bionicle figure in universe alongside, say, the official Bionicle sets? In this one in particular, the only closest comparison is the Karzani set. I'd be kind of curious to see how those compare. I know the Top Duck model is of similar height to Artaka. He's an Order of Matanui member. He's a canon Bionicle build. So it's kind of comparisons like that and just seeing if this makes sense as the character he is supposed to be. So as a quick recap of who Artaka is, he was one of the first beings created even before Matanui the Great Spirit was kind of in charge of the universe. He was created by the great beings alongside his brother Karzani. In the early days of the Matoran universe, they competed for the Mask of Creation, which you can see right here, the Golden Mask of Creation, which Artaka won, which is why he is wearing it. And unfortunately, Karzani lost, so he holds a bit of a grudge against his brother there. Artaka is responsible for building a lot of the really unique stuff and artifacts in the Bionicle universe. So this is anything and everything from the Mask of Light to the Golden Kanohi that the Toamata used to even the battle vehicles used in 2008 like the Jetrax T6, Axelera T9, and Rocco T3. So he builds a lot of the technology used for the Matoran universe, and his backstory was that he used to have a very public island, everyone knew who he was, he had a whole society of people living on his island, and then he was betrayed by Makuta Kojol. So this was at the time where the Brotherhood of Makuta was looking to kind of revolt against the Great Spirit. They betrayed him, stole the Evoki, or the Mask of Light, from his island, and so in return he requested that all traces of his island be wiped off the map, anyone who knows the existence of his island be killed or have that memory erased from them to kind of just stay safely in his own community and not meddle within the events too too much explicitly although he did play a part in sending stuff like the Toa Nuva symbols the Suvas and whatnot he did play a part in making those be a core central part of the Bionicle story so he was kind of just helping the heroes behind the scenes ever since he got betrayed and no longer wanted to be out there publicly as a real figure. And thus, over time, since any mention of him was removed from maps, and his name slowly began to drift into legend, and now he's kind of just regarded as one of the more legendary mythical characters in the Bionicle universe. And so without further ado, let's dive in to this build of Artaka. All right, so removing the official canon mask of creation, which we will get to in a little bit, 
Let's put our focus on the main build for Artaka. You can see the Artaka mock by Wombat Combat Pictures right here. And the first thing that I want to say is that unfortunately it is a little difficult to pose, especially while holding the hammer. It simply cannot support the weight of the hammer at all. And you can't even really get it into a two-handed pose because immediately as soon as you do this, then the other hand will either flop or just fall down. So that is a bit of a con just right off the bat. It's really, really difficult to pose and just get in a position that looks cool while wielding the hammer especially. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the hammer because it does actually work a lot better when he is not holding the hammer. And we're going to set it aside for now. Yep, there you went, falling over again. But we're going to set the hammer aside for now and we're going to focus on the main build because that's what we're looking at here. So starting off with articulation, we've got the standard amount of articulation. He's actually fully covered, so you can really move his legs in a wide range of motion. The knee can bend fully, kind of a 90 degree angle here. The foot can be rotated all the way around. And it is helped a little bit by the addition of these rubber sockets near the bottom of the feet. These are actually, in fact, tire pieces. So they're like Lego City car vehicle tires that a lot of Makis use to kind of add a little bit more friction and restrict the movement a little bit to make it a more stable figure. So that is really nice to see. Unfortunately, the immediate problem you can see here is that the legs simply cannot support the weight of the lower leg right here. And there is absolutely no way that it can actually hold a pose straight up. It just immediately bends down. And this is especially frustrating when I'm trying to pose it, say, in a straight position. You can see that he has a tendency to just fall over on his knees and have his knees crumble like this. And even the back kind of cape here is the only thing that's actually supporting his knees near the back. So you kind of really just have to mess with it to get it in a good pose because otherwise he's just going to do this. And again, this might just be the joints that I used. I tried messing around with a ton of different joints. I actually bought a ton of extra sand green joints for this purpose, but no matter what I do, it just really just cannot support the weight. All of the weight is really just being supported on these knees here, and the weight of the body just causes it to fall backwards like this. You can see it's so prone to falling over. So that's a huge con for me, unfortunately. I really wish that it was a little bit better in that regard, but if you kind of just mess with it so you can kind of splay out his legs to get it in a reasonably good pose, which you can see right here, like you can get him standing. That's not a big issue. It's just, it's gonna take you a little bit of time and effort to do so. And so moving on kind of to the back here, he has an extendable cape piece here that's kind of meant to represent his cape continuing down, I think. So you can obviously move that all around on ball joints. And surprisingly, these are good for actually holding up the back of the legs if they really need to. If you really need that extra support, they can kind of catch on the back here and cause it not to fall over. And of course you have the back of his cape here as well, which actually unfortunately covers up a lot of the fine detail that was done back here. There's a lot of work that was kind of put into these dark gray Technic blocks and making it all seamlessly fade in together and a lot of really nice work that's done here. And it's all kind of covered by just this, this cape. So you don't really see too much of that, but I guess it's kind of a testament to the amount of detail that the builder was willing to put in such that even the part covered by the cape is, uh, is really fully detailed. And the good thing is this hammer can actually be mounted kind of on the back here. So if you wanted to, you could actually have him have his hammer strapped to the back, cover the cape here, and then from the front, it just looks like he kind of has his hammer as a back attachment and he has it kind of mounted on his back. So that is kind of a cool feature. I'm assuming that is what this kind of Technic piece here is for. So can move around to that. Going on to the front and the arms, you can kind of see the arms being able to be moved all the way around in your standard forms of articulation. There is a slight tendency for, and you just saw it, the drill dozer and fire lord head pieces to come off, but if you're careful with it, they won't. And as long as you don't bend it up in too crazy of an angle, it's totally fine. And obviously his arm, his elbow, you can rotate it in any way. So you can kind of turn it all around and really go for all sorts of different poses. And what's really cool is actually the build that they did for the hand here. The hand, every single finger, he has five fingers. You can articulate them on their own. You can even bend like and change the flex in the hand by moving around. You can see this Technic piece right here. Based on how you move it around, you can kind of change 
the curvature of his hand and how, how much he's kind of gripping and holding here. So that's a really cool feature. I just love how the hands are built. They work so well for this figure and he smartly uses the minifigure gun piece, more commonly used in the Star Wars uh, clone blaster pistol type pieces, to use as the thumb here to kind of move that around so you can really get a full range of motion from every single finger here, which I think is a really great feature to have. So that's a big plus for this model. And then honestly, moving up, there's nothing too, too much crazy going on in the articulation department. Head can be moved at a regular angle, and it's really nice, again, to be able to move these shoulder pieces such that you can actually bend them all around and actually get it in different poses when his arm is either lowered or upward raised. So you kind of have a full range of articulation here. Move that all around. And then kind of moving on to the building techniques in general. So ignoring the stability issue, which I did mention is a problem, and I actually will be kind of mentioning that in the wrap up of this review. This is so well detailed. I would maybe say it's one of the best, if not the best, canon mocks that was accepted into the official canon just based on its looks alone. And I know this might be a controversial pick. The Melding Pterodax is the most comparable to this one, but it's really, really great if you look at the fine detail, even if you see the slits in between the armor here, those are Lego system fences. So those are ornate fences mostly used in like Friends and Elves and Ninjago sets, just uses armor detailing through the slits. So such great attention to detail here. And I love how you can even see the heart light. So you've got his glowing heart light here. And the Ben 10 pieces. Again, a lot of people discount Ben 10 for not having a great building system, kind of having wonky pieces. But the aesthetic just fits so well with this front armor piece here. I really love how these kind of arch outwards. And even along the side, let's remove the arm temporarily. Look how well this Ben 10 piece is just integrated to make up the bulk of his torso. And I think that kind of brings me to the next point, which I really want to congratulate the builder on this because canonically, Artaka's color is sand green. Now, in the Bionicle universe, just, nope, there he goes falling backwards again, but in the Bionicle universe, just based on all of the Bionicle sets that we got, there was only one set that actually featured sand green, and that is Zaktan. So Zaktan came with the standard socket piece, which you can see used here, here, and really just all around the build. He came with the upper leg piece, which you can see used here, and there's even more instances in the legs. And he came with a longer leg piece, where you can see the longer piece actually used in the foot here. Right here is the longer piece that Zaktan used. That's all you got to work from when you're making something a mock in sand green. So he really had to get creative in terms of the other parts that were used here. So for example, these are pieces from the CCBS lineup. It's the Bionicle or Hero Factory Beast, like the mini beast foot. It was also used in the Ninjago movie Lloyd's Dragon Set in Sand Green. So he actually had to use feet to attach the upper legs to it. He uses these Technic panels in Sand Green on the sides of the legs that was actually only found. Uh, usually they're used in like Technic cars and whatnot to panel it up, but the piece in Sand Green was only found in Boba Fett's jetpack from the CCBS Star Wars sets. Only in one set, super creative use of sand green. And actually system is integrated really well into here too. So a lot of the sand green detailing here, look at the side of this leg. This is all just system plates that have been stacked together really well. And you can even see like, obviously this is system here, Lego system. Even in the top here, there's some system arc pieces just made to fill out the body completely. And that is honestly something that is so impressive to me, just how well different building styles across Lego's entire portfolio are used. You have, you have Technic, you have Bionicle, obviously, you have System, you even have the Ben 10 stuff, just so much things that have been done extremely well in this model to make it aesthetically fit really well with each other. And I think the thing that really makes it kind of complete the look and make it look really good is the mask, which was designed by Kim K. I'll be putting out a podcast that I did with Kim K kind of discussing the results of this competition within the next few days, kind of in conjunction with this review. But I really feel like the mask is almost feels like it was made for this model because look at the curves on the drill dozer and fire Lord armor piece and the curvature used here and on the Ben 10 pieces, it perfectly blends in with the curvature used on the helmet here. And that kind of brings me to the one extra note that I did want to make about this is that unfortunately, when you swap out the mask for the cannon mask, 
While I do think it is a good design and it's a very interesting design, it quite frankly doesn't really feel like it fits perfectly well with the mock. And actually that is a comment that the mockist made. The guy who designed this Wombat Combat Pictures has actually made a comment that he wasn't sure quite how well this angular mask fit on his mock. And I think to expound on that, I 100% agree. I feel like the really sharp angles of the mask here really don't fit too, too well with like the smooth curves and you can see this upward curvature here and here of the mask pieces and just how well these kind of feel blended together. It feels just a little bit out of place on this mock, which is a little bit unfortunate. I know the official canon art actually kind of altered the mock itself to make these lines seem more angular to fit in better with the mask. So that is kind of the trade-off you get here with these canon contests. You might not get a mask that fits the mock perfectly, especially in 3D, although I will have to congratulate Galva for doing a fantastic job of making this mock and the 3D model for it in almost record time. I mean, he had this ready the day the results were announced. So super impressed by that. Thank you, Galva, for providing the mock or the, the STL file for the download free for everyone to download and print on their own. So that's really nice, but you can kind of see the mass next to each other here and just how much of a difference it makes. But then going on to just the aesthetics, and I have honestly covered aesthetics as much as I could here. I think that this is a beautifully done mock. Aesthetically, it looks really great if you ignore the issues in posability and whatnot. It's just well packed in all around, and it uses some really unique pieces in the building techniques as well. So you can see obviously the mass were used there, but for the leg here, you can see the Vezon helmet. Like this is the head of Vezon. This is like the, the original mask of life that they had here. And it's just used for his lower leg here. And just look at how organic this looks. If I turn this at an angle here, it almost looks like this is made out of muscle. It looks like this is anatomically how a, like, a human leg would almost work that's really muscular. It's like you can see a bulging muscle here and how thick it is. And it really feels like it supports how strong and how powerful this character is. Now, in the mock itself, this probably causes some problems with being a little too heavy and just can't support the weight. But aesthetically, this looks absolutely amazing. And I have to give it bonus points for the incredible parts usage because, again, so many unique parts used to add the sand green feel, especially because it's such a rare color. These are sand green minifigure hands that are just used to add some little bit of extra detail here and just add a little bit extra color into how the mock's done. So just overall, this is, was absolutely an incredible mock. I am really, really amazed to have this in my collection. I'm really happy. And we can kind of get to the final point if we zoom out now and compare them against some of the other denizens of the Bionicle universe. That is, if I can make him stand up. This guy needs a stand. This, this needs a stand that he can lean back on. <laughs> At least it's not a problem when it's on my shelf and I can just lean him against the back wall, but stability is an issue. Okay, we're not gonna even try to have the hammer up. Oh, beautiful. Okay, we got, we got him to stand. Okay, that's, that's good, we're here, okay. Now we can kind of do the wrap up of the review, which is the final point. How well does this fit in universe after many, many minutes of trying to make him stand up correctly? I think the closest comparison is if we just bring in the Karzani set over here, because they are of course supposed to be brothers, and just see how well they look next to each other. Of course, this is the form of the mutated Karzani after he's been messed with in the waters of the pit. So he's not really looking like the prime specimen he once was. I would kind of expect him to have a bit more of a hunched back, but you can immediately see some of the similarities. I mean, they both have capes on. I mean, they're both green and you can kind of see that they're of similar height. Karzani's a little bit more hunched, but that just makes sense in universe as well. So I actually think that next to each other, this kind of makes a lot of sense in the Bionicle universe. And it doesn't use too, too many crazy pieces, despite using system and CCBS and Hero Factory helmets, it still really fits in with the Bionicle universe. And even if you bring in another canonized model, and yes, this mask was also created by King K, the Tobduck model, who is also nine feet tall, like Artaka, 
they're basically the same height. So this is almost perfect because they're about to be the same height in universe and they're the same height as builds as well. So that's absolutely perfect to me. I think it really couldn't have worked out any better such that they stand next to each other and it makes sense. So I really do feel like in terms of making sense in universe, this is not really too, too crazily over detailed to the point where it doesn't really make too much sense. I think that this actually gets a lot of points for fitting well into the universe, but also carving out an aesthetic of its own, which is really great. But so setting aside these compatriots over here, let's recap what I think of the model as a whole. So starting off with posability, unfortunately, this one's where it takes the biggest hit. I really just can't stand the fact that it's almost impossible to pose, and I do understand weak joints does play a part into this, and it is a non-significant part, but if I can just look at him wrong or bump the table and he's at immediate risk of falling over, that's not a really great thing in my opinion. So look, if I just try to twist his hammer here, he immediately just falls over, and that's not really something that's really great to have, especially in a Bionicle model that you love to get into different and unique poses. So. While it is possible to articulate the legs fully, some of that articulation is to its detriment because the fact that you can rotate the knees so much means that he's just so prone to falling over and the only thing supporting his upper body are these knee pieces. It's not like he has pistons or anything that's helping it up. So you really just have such a hard time getting him in position. And I'm gonna really regret knocking him over there because it's gonna be near impossible for me to get him back. The other thing is with the hammer, although the hammer is a nice build, Again, he can't wield it whatsoever, especially with one hand. This hammer just does not work. Maybe with two hands, maybe. Oh, there goes a piece. I, okay. You can get him into a position potentially with two hands here, but even then it's like a horizontal position. And this, this looks kind of really awkward to me. What I would have loved to see is kind of the position. I'm not sure how they got it into this position, but the one that he's in kind of on the cover where he has his hammer like, like this, and it's not even attached on the hand. He, he just has him holding it on the lower part here, upper hand here. This is just not something that works for me. Maybe if I fiddled with it for a really long time, I can get some semblance of a working pose, but it really isn't something that works out well and not something that you can do and have him stand reliably at the same time. Maybe if you really mess with it, get him, oh, his foot just slide over. Yeah, so something like this, oh, and there he goes. So it's just really hard. It's just not a stable build whatsoever. And that's something that really hurts the model. So in terms of posability, if you can get into good poses, it's good. And unfortunately, this is not something that friction limbs can really fix because putting a friction limb in the knee will just kind of mess with how the knee proportions work and how well it fits in with the rest of the model. And especially putting in a friction joint here on the leg, that's gonna spread the leg out sideways. So you don't want that either. So I think that posability, it's gonna get a six out of 10. And I know that might be a little bit harsh, but I really do feel like a little bit more effort maybe could have been put into making it posable and especially being able to even just adding a piston in the knee. And I, I get that that would detract a little bit from the aesthetics, maybe detract a lot. And it is a competition that is mainly for how well does it look in art. But I just really can't get around the fact that the knees are just so flimsy. You can't do anything with the knees. That really hurts the model for me personally. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 on posability. Building techniques is similarly impacted the fact that a piston was not included, but it has so much clever parts usage and when you're not fighting with it to make it pose well, it actually does look really cohesive as a final model. So I'm gonna give building techniques an eight out of 10 because when you actually can get it to stand up and just take it at a picture worthy angle, it looks really good and it looks like it fits together really well. So building techniques, eight out of 10, I'll give you that. Aesthetics, 10 out of 10 immediately because just based on how well it fits with the mask of creation as designed by King K, just how well it all flows together, an easy 10 out of 10 for me, and fitting in the universe gets that same score. So really, this is only being hit in the posability department really hard. But now you might be wondering, how does it compare with the golden mask of creation as seen officially in the official art that was drawn and voted to be the canon appearance? Now with this mask, kind of detracts a little bit from the appearance in my opinion. And it's not even the fact that it's gold. I actually, the golden mask makes sense to me because all of the legendary masks should be gold, I think, the Ignika and the Vahi and whatnot. 
but I think it's just the angularness and the shape of this mask just really feel like it doesn't quite fit well with this model in particular. The lines are super angular and sharp, and it kind of contrasts with the curvature of the shoulders and the front plate right here, the side of the Ben 10 pieces. This mask just kind of takes away from that in my opinion, although I, I have to say that the thought that went into this mask, like making the top look like a Suva, the middle part look like the Ignika, the Mask of Life, the front looking like a How and whatnot, the fact that all these design influences went into making this mask, that actually kind of is really cool to me, given that it is the mask of creation. It was kind of like, oh, it's like this is the mask that's creating it, and it's like it does its own subset of it. So if you want to treat that as kind of your headcanon, you can do that. And I think that's kind of a cool thing to do, is just imagining because he played a big part in the creation of a lot of these things. So I think the mask in that kind of aspect of Artaka works well, but I do think the mock or the artist one, because of the art being just so good and blowing away a lot of the other entries, maybe not because people thought this mask was better than King K's. It's more like they like the artwork in my opinion. But then let's just put the original King K mask back on here. Cause that is what the mock had. Closing thoughts. This mock is incredible. And I want to make it very clear to, to Wombat Combat Pictures and to anyone watching this video that this is one of the best Bionicle mocks that I have ever seen, especially canonized within the Bionicle universe. It blows away all the Dark Hunters, uh, it, it blows away Helrix, although Helrix is also, in my opinion, pretty good. Um, it's better than the Iron Wolves. I'm trying to think of any other good mock that's been canonized. And the melding Makuta Pterodax. That's the only one that comes close. And funnily enough, the, the fact that it comes so close to this one, the melding Pterodax has so many similar issues. He has a massively detailed hammer, but he just can't stand up while holding the hammer well. In fact, you stress his hand by wielding the hammer. His arm is way too weak to support the weight of his hammer, so it almost just immediately flops down extremely similarly to this mock. He has posability and stability issues because of the hammer and because of how detailed it is without including pistons at the back. So in my opinion, these mocks are actually really similar in both good and bad aspects because they obviously look really great. They're very well detailed, but then they also are a pain and a half to pose. And it's almost impossible to get them into good poses other than just standing straight still or just holding a hammer horizontally or even just holding a hammer straight and propping it on the ground where it's very clear that it's being propped on the ground. So a lot of pros and cons in this model, but in my opinion, the pros really outweigh the cons here. If you're looking for a good display model that you can prop up against the back of the shelf and not have to worry about, then this is the model for you. If you're looking to actually get this into good poses to play with it and maybe take some photos of it interacting with other characters, well, just be prepared to sink a lot of time into just making this stand up straight without falling over. And so that about wraps up our review of the Artaka Mock. I am so excited for the canonization contest to continue in 2021. I don't know what's up next, whether it's a Tawahaga or the Golden Skin Being or Miranda or whatnot, but I'm very excited to continue growing the collection of buildable canonized models. And I hope that you enjoyed this review. Stay tuned to Duck Breaks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And let me know in the comments below, what model do you want to see reviewed next? I have almost all the Dark Hunters done, about half the Rahi, and pretty much everything else. Uh, so let me know down below, what do you want to see reviewed, and I'll try to get on that immediately. Thanks so much for tuning in, and bye bye for now.